Coming up on AAA's Discover Oklahoma, a trip back in time for some tasty treats, a place that celebrates Oklahoma's wild wind and a beautiful bed and breakfast. Travel with AAA's Discover Oklahoma. Hi and welcome to AAA's Discover Oklahoma. I'm Jennifer Reynolds. And I'm Dean O'Lolly. Today we're coming to you from the historic Harn Homestead in Oklahoma City. This is a place just rich with Oklahoma history. And of course you can't talk about Oklahoma without at least mentioning the wind. You have to talk about it. In fact, Jeff Roberts, the magic man himself, is going to take us to one spot in the state where they absolutely love the wind. Oklahoma, where the wind comes sweeping down the plain. You know, it's a good thing it does because if it didn't, we wouldn't be able to talk about windmills and the Windmill Museum here in Shattuck. Those things are so cool. Wow, there must be at least 50 windmills here. Where in the world did they find them all? Many of them have come from people right close by here, yes. The first seven windmills were gathered here in the early 90s, and now there are nearly 50, each with its own style and splendor. But make no mistake, there are brains behind the beauty. So many companies made them because it was the only way we could survive out here in this country. We had to have them to pump the water from, we have a wonderful Ogallala aquifer underneath the ground here, but to get water out of it, we don't, we have very few running streams in this area and it's mostly sand and so we really needed to get down into that aquifer to get our water out. After all, the windmill watered crops and the stock and turned dry land into productive land. Some of these windmills date to the mid-1800s. Here's one that's a little different. Yes, that's, that Dempster number 11 is the first one that was made with an oil box on it. Uh, in other words, most of these windmills were just, uh, originally they were just the machinery that you see. And the people have to get up there and oil them like every week to keep them running and keep them good. They are soothing in their own way and quite lovely against the sky but they are more. They are a reminder of the days when this land was settled, a tribute to those pioneer families who came and stayed. Windmills are still in use out here on the prairie. The styles have changed, but the purpose is still the same. And the Shattuck Windmill Park grows every year to salute not just the machines, but a way of life. John Shepherd right here made us a poor man's windmill. It called a homemade windmill, and they made it with just stuff that they had around the farm, That they and that's exactly what Don did, too. And yesterday, that you should have seen that thing. It was really cranking. It was really going, like, really fast. The museum's little farmhouse and authentic dugout are both great conversation starters, especially for those older folks who want to explain to us kids about the way things used to be. Oh, the kids. The kids love to go into the, to the farmhouse and the kids love to go into the dugout. But I'll tell you what, those kids have no idea what they're getting into. They go into that dugout and you'll stand there and you'll talk to them and, they, and you'll say, you know, a family, a whole family lived here. And they'll say, how many? And sometimes you'll say, well, I think there were nine in this family. But they'll look around and they'll say, my room is bigger than this. <laughs> the interesting thing about the museum is the exhibits are always changing. Like every time the wind changes, no okay. But you will get a different view from anywhere you look. Look over there. Look, look at that one. Hey, check out this one. Whoa, I am winded. Yeah, the pun was intended. In Shattuck, I'm Jeff Roberts. Details about the Oklahoma Windmill Museum can be found at TravelOK.com. Just look for that Discover Oklahoma icon. Historically speaking, Oklahomans love a good meal. Rustling up some good grub is a tradition in our state, so it's only natural that we'd have a restaurant called Hamburger King. I recently went to Ada to try it out. Some quick facts about Ada. First, it's located just a short distance from Oklahoma City. It's the county seat of Pontotoc County, has a population of approximately 16,000, is named after Ada Reed, the daughter of an early settler. The city was incorporated in 1901, is home to East Central University, and the headquarters for the Chickasaw Nation. And for the last 60 years, Hamburger King has been serving up breakfast and lunch to literally thousands of people. 
In the early days, Hamburger King was open all night. Today, their hours are 6.30 in the morning to 2 p.m. When you look at why a restaurant is still in business 60 years after they've opened, the reasons can usually be narrowed down to three. Good food, good service, and good people. One thing everyone agrees on is that if you're wanting an old-fashioned burger and you're in the Ada area, you come here. We are very famous for our hamburgers, catfish Fridays, always catfish on Fridays. We usually have hot beef on Tuesday on our specials. We have different kinds of uh, hamburgers that we make here. The Santa Fe Burger. We have our double burgers, triple burgers, and our king burgers, which is four third pound burger patties, yes. Yes. <laughs> Very large. <laughs> Every so often, you just have to have a big, juicy burger and some of those delicious homemade fries. As I sat there and watched this very busy lunch shift, I was impressed with the wait and cook staff. They were very busy, to say the least, but they all worked together. We try to do teamwork, you know. We all uh, try to help each other out wherever we can. You have to do that whenever you're busy like this. Um, we all get along. We've all known each other for quite some time, so. That helps. <laughs> Hamburger King is also the kind of place where people not only come here to eat good food, but amidst the very hectic atmosphere, folks like to chat, gossip, and in many instances, solve the world's problems if they have a little extra time. We're so fast and furious around here. <laughs> um, if you can get time to listen to conversations, like I say, we're very, you've got to see it for yourself today. We're very busy. They just, everybody here likes to sit and visit over their, over their meal and stuff. This is where they come together and, and have a good time, eat a good meal. If you're on the hunt for a great meal, head to our website, travelok.com, and click on Request Free Brochures to order the Discover Oklahoma Dining Guide. In it, a long list of many of our favorite restaurants. We'll discover a few more of those coming up. We have homemade fried pies, and that we have a lot, 10 different kinds, and we make them fresh every morning. We'll take a trip to Muskogee and the Sweet Eats at the Amish Country Store and Restaurant, still ahead. Plus, if Peter Piper was picking pickles, he'd be sure to stop by Jan's, the Made in Oklahoma story that will have you popping pickles, coming up right here on Triple A's Discover Oklahoma. On the road, one never knows what lies ahead. Indubitably, almost every week, one encounters bad form from Sunday drivers. Sheer rudeness begets the occasional fender bender. Precisely why we have insurance from AAA. Hear, hear. A name drivers can trust. Especially good ones. Especially great ones. Cheers! Circles in the sky. We know we belong to the land. And the land we belong to is red. And when we say, Yo! Honey, honey, yeah. We're only saying you're doing fine, Oklahoma. 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 Come see for yourself. Until there's an accident rewind button, there's the next best thing, insurance from AAA. Welcome back to AAA's Discover Oklahoma. We're coming to you from the Harn Homestead in Northeast Oklahoma City. It is a great place to learn about the early days in our state. Now this is not the only place where you can take a trip back in time. How about going to Muskogee, have an incredible meal, and have some unique shopping too. Traveling up Highway 69 North through Muskogee, you can't help but notice the big sign that says you've arrived at the Amish Country Store and Restaurant. It's here you'll find a wonderful place to have a leisurely lunch. There's meatloaf made from scratch, chicken and dressing, dumplings, oh and don't forget about dessert. We have homemade fried pies and that we have a lot, 10 different kinds and we make them fresh every morning, we put them out at nine o'clock, and it draws in a lot of people because you can't find homemade fried pies anymore. We have homemade Amish bread that the Amish people do and homemade 
pies, we have jams and jellies, and this is one of our best sellers, and it's called the Frog Jam. And people actually ask me if that's really frogs. I have people ask me that. <laughs> but it's actually fig, raspberry, orange, and grape, and it's combined, and it's really good. There are a lot of really good treats here. Now, some are a bit unusual, but of course, I sampled many of them. For example, I loved the flaxseed chips. Tasted like, no, not chicken, but Fritos. They have guacamole bites, and oh, the dried okra, that one became a favorite of mine too. Very tasty. Now, Pam's been doing business with five different Amish families in the community for years now. One family does their candy, another all of their bread, one does all the cookies, and so on. The Amish thing is a, it's a really big thing in Oklahoma and I guess everywhere else, but you know, when you think of Amish, they always think everything's fresh, it's homemade, they make it from scratch, and they really do. I mean, they're very hardworking people. Pam's daughter does make their fudge. They do about 40 different kinds, and yes, I sampled them too, and they had to tear me away from where they were making the fudge. Now, while looking around the store, just when I thought I had seen all the different types of products they carry, I would find something else new or unusual, but it was all very exciting. People think that we're kind of like a small Cracker Barrel because we have the food, and then, you know, they can come in and eat, and then they go over and shop on the store side where we have like maybe 40 different kinds of candy, and we have um, probably 30 different kinds of jelly, homemade noodles, we have cheese and homemade butter, and that is what brings people in, they wanna come back, and we have a lot of repeat customers that will drive a long ways just to come and get butter. And for your convenience, the Amish Country Store and Restaurant is open seven days a week. Lots of time to browse the literally hundreds of products they have and don't forget to bring your appetite for lunch. Plan your trip to Muskogee and the Amish Bakery on our website, TravelOK.com. Just look for the Discover Oklahoma section. When you're planning trips, a popular stopover point for many traveling the Sooner State is a bed and breakfast. People will come and lay in the hammock and there's an opening between the cedar trees and they can look up and see all the stars that they can't see in Dallas or Fort Worth or Oklahoma City. Bright stars and a big country welcome. Where to find both coming up when AAA's Discover Oklahoma continues. I was sitting behind an SUV at a red stoplight, and I guess the light wasn't turning green, green fast enough for her, so she puts her SUV in reverse and backs right into my new car. I'd called her insurance several times and they had never heard of her. We recommended that she go ahead and turn the claim in to AAA so that AAA claims adjusters could take care of her. I paid my $500 deductible to get my car fixed and I didn't ever expect to see that money again. I didn't want her to have to be out $500 because it wasn't her fault. So that was the only question. A lot of times if there is no insurance coverage, it's hard to get the other party to pay up. Two months later, I had a check in the mail from AAA for my $500. So when I had given up on it, they were still fighting to get my money back for me. She said, guess what, I got a check in the mail. That was a good feeling for her and it made me feel good too. They've really shown me that if I ever have a problem that they're gonna, they're gonna help me fix it. Welcome back to AAA's Discover Oklahoma, coming to you from the Harn Homestead, which is a great place to learn about how our great state got its start. And it was in a tiny Oklahoma town where a popular brand of pickles got its start, and Shell Wagner is going to take us there. I have discovered the secret power for affecting change, for motivating others and moving mountains. The key, this little pickle. Once folks taste them, they'll do almost anything to get their hands on more. They are that addicting. We hear the funniest messages on our answering machine. I've got to have some more pickles. My children came to my house. They stole them all. I don't, I had, to, I have to hide them or they take them all. We, it's the, it's so funny. The popularity of Jan's pickles has spawned many imitators. So you'll want to look for the words Imie's dream on the label to know you're getting the real deal. We named that after my aunt Imogene because the base of the recipe was hers. Jan tweaked her Aunt Imie's recipe until she had created what many refer to as the perfect pickle. So I started 
giving them as gifts, making them and giving them as gifts, or taking them if we had a party or something to go to, and people just kept saying, you should make these and sell them. So Jan and her husband Glenn took the advice to heart and began spending all their time making pickles in a former school cafeteria near their home in Tacoma. And that worked for a little while, the two of us could do that. And then he got uh, someone to help him, and then he got someone else to help him. It, it built until we had six people working for us. But we couldn't keep up with the demand, even with our six employees. And Glenn came to me and said, Jan, we've got to rethink this. Now Jan's garlic dills, sweet garlic dills, spicy garlic dills, and spicy sweet garlic dills are made by Oklahoma City co-packer s, s Foods with the same care and quality as that first jar Jan made all those years ago. We ship them all over the United States. We have not advertised one penny. Um, it's amazing. So if Jan's beloved Aunt Imy were here today, what do you imagine she would think about the unexpected power of the pickle? She would get a hoot out of this. She would just think it was awesome. In Tacoma, and now Oklahoma City, I'm Shell Wagner. Details on where you can find Jan's pickles, and I'm going to tell you, I think they're the best in the world, are on our website, TravelOK.com. You know, visitors to Oklahoma always comment on our hospitality. And there may be no better place to get a good dose of that than in an Oklahoma bed and breakfast. Up next, the bed and breakfast that has quite the story behind it when Discover Oklahoma continues. Great travel tips anytime. Like Discover Oklahoma on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. He's been our insurance agent for the last six years. Uh, but the year before that, he was the best man at my wedding. Asked him if I could quote his auto insurance, to which he said yes, but you're going to have to beat the company I've been with for forever in order to get it. I didn't think uh, they'd be able to. So I, I took the opportunity to quote it, and I know I was able to save him about $600 a year. Man, I was just like, boom shakalaka, like, are you kidding me? He actually said that on the phone, boom shakalaka. You know, saving money with AAA means food on the table for my family. Even after he saved us tons of money, He's looked at our policy over the years and, and helped us make changes to save even more money without us asking. We offer the best of both worlds. Um, we have uh, great cu customer satisfaction through the level of service that we provide uh, and combined with an amazingly low rate. You know, as a parent and as a husband, having insurance uh, is a safety net because life happens. I know that AAA is going to take care of us. I don't have to worry about it. AAA is going to be there. Levi is going to be there. They're going to take care of our needs. It's the final days of Ford Truck Month. Every 42 seconds, someone decides to buy a Ford F-Series truck, America's number one seller. Someone who doesn't settle for second best, who believes actions speak louder than words, and leaves it all out on the field. During the final days of Ford Truck Month, drive off in a 2014 Ford F-150 XLT for just $2.52 a month. Hurry into your Oklahoma Ford dealer today. Welcome back. AAA Oklahoma makes this show possible and does a lot of other great things around our state. Here's a look at today's AAA. Hi, Christy Gettle here with AAA Oklahoma. Everyone knows AAA roadside service can more than pay for itself with just one service call. But did you know a AAA membership can also save you money on a daily basis? AAA members save 20% at 1-800-Flowers. Buy $50 worth of roses and save 10 bucks. Mention your card to Sprint and save 10% on your wireless bill even if you're an existing Sprint customer. Car parts? Show your AAA card at any Napa store for an instant 10% off your order. In fact, that's what we call this program. Show your card and save. And it's the largest member discount program in the world. AAA members saved more than $2.1 billion last year alone. It's all about putting your membership card to work for you. Check out the hundreds of partners who offer AAA members special deals. And don't forget about our tremendous insurance premium discounts, special travel offerings and upgrades, and financial products that earn you money. So if you're interested in saving money, visit AAA.com. AAA, for the ones who matter most to you. Welcome back to the Harn Homestead in Oklahoma City. This is a place rich in territorial history. And it's fitting because our next location is a place that was built by some of Oklahoma's earliest settlers, and now it's a treasured bed and breakfast in the town of David. There's no hint of this imposing house from the highway. No telltale grand entrance, no fanfare. A lot like happiness, it's something you can only find if you're looking for it. Built by a territorial doctor back in 1898, 
the Pecan Valley Inn Bed and Breakfast in Davis has long been the place to go to feel better. I think what's peaceful, the, to come outside and you can hear the birds, you can hear the wind rustling through the leaves, just sit on the front porch. I mean, they can come and just enjoy. People will come and lay in the hammock and there's an opening between the cedar trees and they can look up and see all the stars that they can't see in Dallas or Fort Worth or Oklahoma City. So they really enjoy getting out and looking at the stars. The inside of the house is just as enchanting. The parlor is laced with photos and mementos from another time. This old house is certainly, you know, gives you a sense of history. And you'll be smitten with the old-fashioned craftsmanship, especially the beautiful trim work. The builders brought the wood across the Red River in a wagon, and then they camped out here on the grounds for several months building this house. And I'm just amazed that uh, with no electricity, no saws, you know, everything's done by hand. Janet and her son have spent years restoring the house by hand, making this retreat both historically accurate and restful. Each of the distinctly decorated guest suites comes with a luxurious claw-footed tub. Miss Laura's room is named for the doctor's daughter, who saw this property through many decades, living in the house until she was 98. That's a very popular room because it's feminine but yet not fussy. Some rooms pay homage to other members of the doctor's family, while the minder suite honors Janet's own folks. But no matter which room you claim, comfort is a priority here, and the quiet countryside guarantees you'll log a perfect night's sleep, only to awaken to a quiet gourmet breakfast. You can then settle in for a full day of dawdling and feel good knowing this place is just what the doctor ordered. To find out more about the Pecan Valley Inn and many other bed and breakfasts in Oklahoma, head to our website, TravelOK.com. From one sweet spot to another, let's head up I-35 now to Guthrie and home of the Cripple Creek Honey Farm. Cripple Creek Farms began innocently enough. We wanted some bees to pollinate a garden with, so we found a couple of hives. Randy and Teresa Brady both have careers away from the farm, so they figured while they were away at work, the bees could work the vegetable patch. They never expected that these tiny insects would become such a big part of their lives. Once I got them, I just couldn't stay out of them. and They're just so fascinating. Now their farm near Guthrie is all abuzz, with stacks and stacks of hives, extracting and filtering equipment, and rivers of the sweet, golden, sticky stuff. It became apparent that this operation was much too captivating to keep to themselves, so the Bradys decided to share it with others as an agritourism destination. I was looking forward to entering the secret world of bees, the species that holds on their feet the very survival of the human race. But then again, there's that little issue of the stinger. I come from a long line of flying insect frady cats, but Teresa and Randy assured me that this very fashion-forward bee suit would keep me safe. A lot of people are afraid of them just because they've probably been stung by a wasp or a bumblebee or something like that, and they just associate all bees together. And the honeybee really is pretty docile. Lately, the whole world has gone gaga for bees. From the renewed interest in the age-old health claims about honey and the Grow Your Own Food movement, to concern over headlines about the mysterious colony collapse phenomenon. We need honeybees. They're responsible for pollinating a third of our natural food supply. And that really doesn't even take into consideration the pollination of the plants that go into forage that feed the animals that we ultimately eat. Because honey is all natural, nothing added, nothing in there that the bug didn't make, you can literally take honey from the hive to the bottle. Oh, that, that one's perfect. Beautiful, wasn't it? Yeah. All you're doing is scratching that cap loose so the honey can come out. It's a sticky job. <laughs> it is sticky. But when you're done, you get to lick your fingers. <laughs> smell the honey coming out of there. Yes, it smells wonderful. Look at all that beautiful honey. Besides the delicious honey, Cripple Creek Farms and the bees also make beeswax candles, lotion bars, creamed honey, and lots of other great products. Look for them at the Edmund Farmer's Market, or like me, you can make arrangements to buzz by the farm for the full experience. At Cripple Creek Farms in Guthrie, I'm Shell Wagner. 
A big thanks to the folks here at the Harn Homestead in Northeast Oklahoma City for hosting us this week. And coming up next week on AAA's Discover Oklahoma, we're headed to T-Town. Your behind the scenes look at Fat Philly's cheesesteaks and what makes them so darn good. So until next time, remember, there's always something to discover in Oklahoma. Production vehicle provided by the Oklahoma Ford Dealers, official partner of the Oklahoma Tourism and Recreation Department.